in the last class uh, we have discussed the uh, distributions of functions of several variable in that uh, we have uh, started with the discrete type uh, random variables if you have a n dimensional discrete type random variable and uh, one can find the distributions of uh, the new set of uh, n dimensional random variable of the discrete types then later we have discussed uh, when you have a continuous type random variable of n dimensional and you have another set of a uh, new continuous type n dimensional random variable using a nice theorem one can get the joint probability density function of a new set of n dimensional random variable by applying the theorem one can get the joint distribution then you can get the marginal now in this lecture we are going to discuss uh, one particular type of uh, functions of uh, several random variables that is called uh, order statistics why the name is called order statistics why the order statistics has to be in this uh, lecture as the functions of uh, several random variables uh, you will understand so for that uh, i am going to give uh, first uh, what is the meaning of uh, order statistics from the scratch let x1 x2 xn be a n dimensional random variables and small x1 small x2 small xn be a n tuple be a n tuple assumed by the random variables x1 x2 xn that means uh, the possible values of uh, the n dimensional random variables are uh, small x1 x2 xn arrange these possible values in increasing uh, order of uh, magnitude so that i can make out uh, that is uh, make it as a x bracket 1 x bracket 2 and so on till uh, x bracket n where the x bracket 1 is nothing but uh, minimum of uh, this uh, xi values similarly x bracket 2 is the second smallest value in x1 x2 so on xn similarly the xn x bracket n that is nothing but uh, maximum of x1 x2 and so on till x that's a difference between uh, x size and x bracket size fine now i'm going to define the order statistics that is uh, the function x bracket uh, 
k of x1, x2, so on, xn that takes on the values x small k, a small x within bracket k in each possible sequence x 1, x 2 and so on x n of values assumed by assumed by the n dimensional random variable x 1, x 2, x n. that function, the function x bracket k, that capital X bracket k, that is known as the kth order statistics or statistics of kth order. statistics of uh, order k. Now, the capital X bracket 1, capital X bracket 2 and so on till capital X bracket n that is called uh, the set of order statistics for the random vector x1, x2, so on, x. So, from the given n dimensional random vectors, we are getting another n dimensional random vectors x bracket 1, x bracket 2 and so on in which each x bracket case is the function of x size in which the x bracket 1 is a minimum of all those random variables x bracket n is the maximum of uh, n such random variables. This uh, set of uh, n random variable is called uh, order statistics. We will go for some important results on uh, order statistics. For that, uh, I am going to make the assumption, assume that, assume that the random variable x i is i is equal to 1 to n or i i d random variables. We have already given the definition of i i d that means uh, each random variable uh, having the same distribution and all the random variables are mutually independent. All the random variables are mutually independent and having identical distribution therefore, they are called i a d random variables with uh, continuous type that means all the random variables are of the continuous type as well as uh, they are i a d random variables i am going to give the result as the following theorem one can find the joint probability density function of the order statistics as the joint probability density function
with the possible values. in terms of the probability density function of uh, x i s that is n factorial product of i is equal to 1 to n the probability density function of the i th random variable by substituting a x i by x bracket i the product of uh, this probability density function multiplied by the n factorial that is going to be the joint probability density function within the interval when uh, x bracket 1 is uh, lesser than x bracket 2 and so on till uh, x bracket n otherwise it is going to be 0. So, this result also comes from the theorem. One can find uh, the joint probability density function of uh, order statistics in terms of uh, the joint probability density function of uh, x1, x2, xn. But since uh, these random variables are uh, IAD random variables, therefore, in the right hand side, instead of joint probability density function of x size, we have a probability density function of uh, x i itself n factorial product of i is equal to 1 to n and the probability density function of x i by substituting the values x i by x of bracket i between the interval x of 1 less than x of 2 and so on till less than x of n it is a non-zero joint probability density function otherwise it is 0. One can verify the multidimensional integration with respect to d of x bracket 1, d of x bracket 2, d of x bracket n that is going to be 1. So, here we are finding the joint probability density function of uh, order statistics. The next result uh, one can get uh, the marginal distribution of uh, order statistics that is the uh, second theorem. The theorem 2, the marginal probability density function of uh, any rth order statistics is given by f suffix x bracket r with the value of x of r that is going to be since you know the joint probability density function of uh, order statistics uh, one can easily not one can easily one can get uh, the marginal probability density function of any one r order statistics from the n dimensional uh, joint probability density function of uh, order statistics. So, this is going to be n factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial n minus r factorial multiplied by the CDF of uh, since all the random variables are IAD random variable, you do not need to mention or you can just mention x or any x i of uh, evaluated at uh, x bracket r. This uh, C d of uh, raise it to the power r minus 1 multiplied by the 1 minus C d of of uh, any one random variable all are identical random variable c d of evaluated at x bracket r raise it to the power n minus r multiplied by the probability density function of any one random variable evaluated at x of r. this is going to be the probability density function of 
ऑर्थ ऑर्डर स्टैटिस्टिक्स बाय यूजिंग द सीडीएफ ऑफ एनी वन रैंडम वेरिएबल एंड द प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन ऑफ एनी वन रैंडम वेरिएबल सो इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग एक्स आई आई एम राइटिंग एक्स वेर F is the common since they are identical. It's a common CDF of the random variables x1, x2, xn. Similarly, the small f x is the common probability density function of the random variable x1, x2, xn. So one can get the probability density function of order statistics with the help of uh, the probability density function and the CDF of uh, the random variables, common uh, CDF uh, and common PDF of the random variables x1, x2, x. As a example, we are going to make uh, let x1, x2, xn b iid random variables with common with common probability density function that means uh, i am going for all the random variables are of the continuous type so the common probability density function that is uh, 1 when x is lies between 0 to 1 otherwise it is 0. All are IID random variable as well as uh, all are continuous type random variable with the common probability density function f of x is this. By using the previous uh, result one can get the probability density function of any rth order statistics that is uh, the probability density function of any rth order statistics that is going to be n factorial divided by r minus 1 factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial and then you have to substitute see the previous result you have to substitute uh, the cdf as well as the probability density function and if you see this example you can make out uh, the distribution of x size is a uniform distribution between the interval 0 to 1 if the random variable is uniform distributed between the interval 0 to 1 you can get the cdf easily so you substitute the cdf that is a x suffix within bracket r that power r minus 1 and the 1 minus cdf that is a 1 minus x suffix r that is power n minus r and multiplied by the probability density function that is 1. So, this is valid whenever the rth order statistics is going to be 0 to 1 and this is true for r is equal to 1, 2 and so on till n, 0 otherwise. So, this result uh, the probability density function is non-zero when uh, x bracket r is uh, lies between 0 to 1 otherwise it is 0 and this way you can find out the probability density function of uh, r is equal to 1 to n. We will go for a second example. The second example is uh, let uh, x follows uh, exponential distribution with the parameter lambda and y follows uh, exponential distribution 
with the parameter mu. Assume that both the random variables are independent. We have two exponential distributed random variables with the parameters lambda and mu respectively. Our interest is to find the distribution of uh, find the distribution of uh, minimum of uh, x comma y. Since it is uh, only two random variables, you will have a minimum of two random variables as well as we will have a maximum of two random variables both together that is a set of order statistics. In that uh, I am interested to find out the distribution of a minimum of a two random variables. I can use the previous theorem. I can get the joint distribution, then I can get the marginal distribution by applying the theorem. But uh, I am not going to apply the theorem. Instead of that, uh, I can uh, easily able to find out the minimum of two random variables without using uh, the previous theorem. That is, uh, let me make a uh, new random variable z is uh, minimum of uh, x comma y. Since x is a continuous type, y is a continuous type, uh, minimum of x comma y that is also going to be a continuous type random variable. Therefore, I have to find uh, the CDF of the random variable z or uh, probability density function of z. By using the previous theorem, I can get directly the probability density function of z, but I am not going to do that. I am going to find out uh, the distribution of z in the form of a CDF. Since it is a minimum, I will go for complement CDF. That is, uh, for uh, z is greater than 0, the probability of uh, capital Z is greater than uh, small z. I am going for finding out uh, the complement CDF of the random variable z. That is same as the probability of z is nothing but uh, minimum of uh, x comma y that is greater than small z. Since uh, minimum of x comma y is going to be greater than z, that means uh, each random variable is also going to be greater than z. So, that is same as p of x is greater than z as well as uh, y is greater than z. If minimum of x comma y is greater than z, uh, that means uh, both x and y greater than z. If I know the joint distribution, I can find out uh, the probability of this, but I made the assumption both the random variables are independent. Therefore, the joint distribution is same as a product of uh, individual uh, distributions. Therefore, the probability of z is greater than z is same as probability of uh, x is greater than z as multiplied by probability of y is greater than z. I have already made the assumption x follows a exponential distribution with the parameter lambda. Therefore, I should know what is the probability density function Similarly, I should know what is the CDF of uh, exponential distribution that is 1 minus e power minus lambda x. It is 0 between minus infinity to 0 from 0 onwards uh, it is going to be 1 minus e power minus lambda x. So, I am going to use uh, this result uh, in the probability of x is greater than z the CDF is nothing but a probability of uh, x is uh, less than or equal to small x. So, what I want is a probability of x is greater than z. So, that is same as e power minus lambda z. Similarly, 
y is also exponential distributed with a parameter mu. The similar derivation makes that is e power minus mu times z. So, the conclusion is it is e power minus lambda plus mu times z when z is going to be greater than 0. So, I can write down things correctly that is cdf of z that is going to be 0 when z is between minus infinity to 0 and 1 minus e power minus lambda plus mu times z when z is starting from 0 to infinity. So, this is the distribution of z distribution means here it is a CDF. In this page itself you can compare when x is the exponential distribution the CDF is 0 from minus infinity to 0 then 0 to infinity it is 1 minus e power minus lambda x it is in the same form. Therefore, once uh, two different random variable having the same CDF then we can conclude uh, both the random variables are of the same distribution. Therefore, I can conclude uh, z is also same distribution of exponential distribution. The parameter is here it is minus lambda, here it is minus lambda plus mu and this is exponential distribution with the parameter lambda. Therefore, z is going to be exponential distribution with the parameter lambda plus mu. When two different random variables having the distribution of the similar form, then you can conclude both the random variables are having the similar distributions. So, here z is going to be exponential distribution with the parameter lambda plus mu. So, the observation is whenever you have a two independent exponential distributed random variable random variables, then the minimum of uh, independent exponential distributed random variables is again exponential distribution. This concept can be extended for uh, n dimensional random variable n dimensional random variables that means uh, if you have a mutually independent exponentially distributed n dimensional random variables then the minimum of uh, those independent mutually independent exponentially distributed random variables is again exponential distribution the parameter is a sum of the parameters of individual distribution. This is an easy way of uh, finding the minimum of uh, two independent exponential distribution.